Ooh, oh man. Have you guys seen 14 Peaks by Jimmy Chin? I mean, it's not by Jimmy Chin, but Jimmy Chin put it on his Instagram, and I thought it was, like, all by him, but it's not. Um, he is definitely a part of it, though. Uh, it's called 14 Peaks. It just came out on Netflix, and it's just another freaking fantastic mountaineering movie in the mountains. This dude climbs the tallest 14 peaks in the world, which historically was the, you know, first climbed in 16 years, 14 tallest peaks in the world, like Mount Everest, that kind of level stuff. And then it got down to like seven years or something. And then this dude did it in like seven months. So it's insane. Like the, uh, like just how, like how quick he does it, everything. It's just freaking fantastic. The, the, uh, cinematography is amazing. Like the shots, the compositions, the whole story, the whole thing is amazing. Just go freaking watch it. It's, it's awesome. Like, uh, that does, uh, those kinds of documentaries and movies are just my favorite. So <laughs> they're very cool. Um, besides that, um, yeah, I don't have a desk for my setup yet. You know, it'll come when it comes. I don't even have a plan where I'm going to buy a desk, but I will. And, uh, the other thing I got in the mail this week, uh, I'm waiting for a few lights to come so I can like put some really cool colored lights and stuff on it, make it look really awesome. Do a little B roll for it. So, uh, we're not going to do that yet, but Today, I was going to do some photo editing, share my screen with you guys, and show you how I edit a little bit. Um, it's nothing crazy, but I just wanted to make a video, and I really want to make videos showing how I edit, just for me to look back on, and, um, you know, maybe somebody will find it helpful and useful. And, uh, you know, it's cool to see other people's workflows and stuff, so we're just going to get right into it and start recording the screen now. I mean, now. Okay, so my screen should be recording now, and this is Heather. Uh, this is not like a crazy shoot. She uh, met her at another photography gig I was doing uh, for a birthday party and followed a whole bunch of those people on Instagram, you know, checked everybody out. This girl does a lot of dancing, like these super, like, uh, exotic kind of dancing, just very, like, wild and creative and crazy. It's very cool. And uh, she recently had a video on TikTok that went, like, pretty much viral. I have, like, almost a million views or a million, I can't remember, um, which was pretty crazy. And um, so I just contacted her and was like, hey, yeah, I saw somebody was doing photos. Like, she was doing some photo shoots and stuff. So I was like, yeah, let's get together and do some photos. Um, so I narrowed the photos down. I took, like, 300 photos or something. We just shot off a bunch of photos at this... Uh, at the glass museum in Tacoma, just outside the area, not actually in the museum. But, um, yeah, you can see a lot of the shots are really cool. Like you got this cool glass stuff. This is actually really funky, uh, how I did this. Uh, I'll go through that, but, um, yeah, like the, uh, I like the wavy lines, you know, she's pretty cool. A few different color edits, uh, different stuff. So this is kind of what we're going to go through today. And yeah, the thing I did not like about this shoot is that we didn't really have a plan. So it's just kind of like, hey, you know, do your thing, dance, you know, um, get in the zone kind of thing. And I was just going to take pictures of her. So that's kind of what we did. Um, a few of the compositions like this, I noticed, I was like, yeah, I get between these two pillars um, and like put your arms straight up, you know, so it's kind of like this composition of pillars looks kind of cool. Um, another one was like these glass things like these are all wavy so I wanted her to be wavy as well like this is you know really cool with all these wavy pieces of glass um, like fitting right in there looks really cool um, so yeah so that's kind of what the shoot was about and we can jump right into the editing <laughs> I'll show you guys this one too <laughs> this one is so funky I don't remember if I have no just the the one so you know obviously this is let's see yeah, so this original photo is, is more like this. Um, it's, you know, and then I thought, wow, this is so interesting. Like, what if I just flipped it? And uh, it's very visually interesting to me. It's, like, just very creative to flip the photo around and do things like this. Because you got this line here. It kind of looks like a building. Like, you're on the top of a building. Um, because this, um, I guess, this path, this concrete uh, floor here is so perfectly lined up and you have this funky railing sticking out and then you got all these crazy things visually sticking out and then her 
looks kind of like she's hanging off of it. Like she's got one foot on here. Um, it's just very visually interesting and she's looking at the camera. So it's just like kind of cool. Anyways, let's get into some of the edits. Um, hopefully we can get done with these. So this very first photo, actually, I'm going to show you the original because it is similar to this one. And I'll show you what I did here with it. So the original looks like that. That's actually cropped in still. Um, it's actually wider around the edges here. Uh, if we go to after I did this, so basically what I did with this photo is if we like reset it. Yeah, that's the whole thing. <laughs> what I did is uh, you have this transform tool where you can change like vertically. You can, you know, make these line up more straight. You can horizontal, you know, horizontal, make it rotate. You can scale aspect ratio, all that. Uh, what I did is I think I hit full. Yeah, so full makes this come totally, totally level, which is just insane. And I'm pretty sure I just scaled in. So you just scale in with the photo, um, bring it down, I cropped it, and it turned into this photo after, oops, what happened there? Yep. So I, uh, you know, did my color edits, cropped it, and just like very weird uh which i like it's like what the heck is going on because you have this is like very in focus she's very cool you can really see her come out because of all those black like she really her legs and stuff already come out in this part of the picture i tried to line up the uh, ground here to be perfectly level and then um this is these glass things are in focus and then they slowly get more and more like fuzzy and out of focus and weird and it's because you know like the original photo looks like this so you're not even supposed to be able to see these in general. And now it's like you're looking straight on at them and you still can't see them like this thing. <laughs> it just looks like this looks like some weird funky portal where they got cut off. Uh, so it's very visually interesting. And I, I just kind of I like that a lot. It's it's very weird and out there and creative. Kind of like the glass itself is very creative and wonky. Um, and you got Heather like doing this crazy pose. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's see the next photo. So same thing, just normal photo. This might even be the exact same photo, just copied. Oh yeah, it is right here. So down here we have copy one of this exact photo. So yeah, you can see same copy right there. And then, yeah, I really like this one, like I said, because it's got this funky wavy glass art thing. And then we have her hand coming up right into it and just the weird pose again uh, looks kind of cool i like this one just because it's really straightforward like the leading lines going all the way down and her really popping out as the subject looks really cool uh so second edit so a lot of these edits like this um it's like all my crazy presets here tons and tons of presets so these are these are bought um, off the internet, which I think is fine to do. Um, I don't straight up use these. I'm not really familiar with most of them in general. I think the ones I like to use are, yeah, I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't really use these. I think vintage film, I, I check out every once in a while. Cause I think it's got a few like just decent, uh, not for this one, I guess. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't really like to use presets. I'm, you know, I made most of these like obviously not that one you can tell the ones i haven't made birthday landscape uh natural wedding i think is from a pack yeah tone one tone two this one's actually pretty good if you want to try out some of those wedding ones but i made this i made this i did not make this one i made this i made this this not that this the not that one anyway i made like most of these i don't really um use presets as uh, something I depend on it's just kind of a guide just kind of like getting ideas of how I could edit something differently and make it Make it look the way I want to So but most of these like this exact style here is taken off one of my absolute favorite presets actually Which is Chris Howe v1. I don't know where you even get this from. I don't remember um, But he has this one called gold rush So if I click on gold rush, this is gold rush I'm gonna undo the preset that I just clicked on 
and it turns back to that. So I added the orange, I added a little bit of vibrance and contrast, and it turns into that, but um, this is kind of like the base foundation, and I like the preset a lot because the shadows are toned kind of bluish. Um, the look overall is just very unique and interesting, just like very dark orange, dark blue, kind of teal. Uh, it's just like... It catches my attention a lot. I don't know why I like it so much, I just do. So I've used it for quite a few photos, tweaked it in a lot of different ways for a lot of different photos. Um, but it is kind of a, a fun base to use and really get into. Uh, Chris has other presets I don't uh, use all the time. <laughs> Mostly Gold Rush. This is very interesting. I've never uh, come across a preset quite like it. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know where to buy that. Chris, shout out to Chris Howe, though. He's, he's freaking cool. Um, besides that, I kind of like that edit. I like this one, too. Like, the extreme teal over here is like, okay. You know, if you were looking at this on Instagram, you'd be like, whoa, cool. You probably wouldn't even notice. But since I'm editing it and I do notice, you know. <laughs> it's like, eh, you know. I'd probably go with this one first. But. So, this photo... This looks pretty interesting. We could probably copy and paste from this one. So I'm gonna copy these settings. Get this mask. Craft, craft, craft it. Copy those. Go back. See how this turns out. Oh, kind of cool. I like that. I like the highlights. So so bright and orange, like the sun's just. Shining through, which is exactly how it was that day. I'm going to update this mask. This is a subject mask, so it's either going to, yeah, it's going to affect the background. And you have the subject, Heather, right here, just totally popping out. I'm going to update. So this one's going to brighten Heather up out of the photo, too. Yeah, so it just brightens her a little bit. You can see that that goes there, and that this one covers everything except her. And if you want to create a mask like this, um, you know. Create mask, select subject in the uh, newest Lightroom update. This is just freaking insane. So now it's just totally masked her. And I can click on this and just, I can do whatever I want. It kind of grabs some of the uh, the glass up here too, but it's like, you know, you can do whatever the heck you want with this. You can turn her yellow, you can turn her green, you can turn her blue, <laughs> you can de-sharpen it, you can over-saturate it, you can de-haze it, you can whatever the heck you want. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, and then you can delete it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and then I used a few other masks, so this one is, this is brightening. You know, it's darkening the bottom of the screen. This needs to go over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tone that down a little bit. That's a little bit crazy really brighten it because it's actually a uh, radio filter. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to take the exposure down a little bit. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I like how, you know, I, I told her kind of like, you know, be one of the sculptures. Try to be part of the glass. Be like some weird funky shape, like, you know, this funky little vase thing and, you know, all these cool little things. Like, these are so unique and crazy. I was like, try to try to fit in, like fit into this little frame right here and be a part of the glass, you know, and uh, I think she did a pretty good job at that. So that's kind of that's kind of uh, how we were doing that. I'm going to go ahead and call that good because I really think this is pretty vibrant. Uh, you can see her really well, especially I love this black strip comes across and she just hits right into it. So you can really it really grabs your attention there and just all the sunlight coming through looks really great. This is another one of the. Chris Howe preset things, where these are super, super orange. They're kind of dark orange, and then you've got these dark blue teals kind of thing. Looks really cool. And I actually did this in camera, uh, tilted it, because I was like, oh, this would, I don't know why, it's just kind of a weird intuition thing. I was like, this would look really cool crooked. And uh, I think it does, still. It looks, uh, <laughs> it's just interesting, you know? Make your photos a little bit more interesting instead of taking, like, straight on, uh, kind of like, uh, this shot here, you know, you have like these nice leading lines down. She's here. Cool. You know, it looks good. Um, but like these crooked shots are just very more interesting. You're like, whoa, what's going on, you know? 
That's cool. Kind of adds some action feel to it. I don't know. It's just more interesting. These were really nice uh, because she was right into the sun. The sun, you know, looks great. Like, the wind was all over the place. Um, so these portraits, like, I love the expression here. Like, this is, you know, an awesome, like, uh, you know, just sunny, having a good time kind of shot. Um, you got so much depth with the hand being out of focus, the background, and, you know, the hair just going all crazy everywhere. Uh, it's a cool shot. I like that one quite a bit. This one's cool. It's nice just, like, you know little model shot and then this is another cool shot of the hair and the sunlight coming out looks really cool um so this one's edited i really like this uh it's a pretty natural feel i mean this one hasn't been edited at all so maybe we can go through what i would do with this like uh i really want it to look pretty natural i'm gonna turn these up and turn the dehaze. Uh, I don't really like going crazy with this. And I actually like turning my clarity down so it's like pretty soft. Negative 10. Texture up maybe like a tiny bit. Vibrance. Uh, I'm not going to turn that up too much. Something I do really like to do is bring the shadows up and then back down. I'm not sure if this is the photo to do that with actually, you know. I think we're going to take the shadows down. Bring this back down and maybe up a little bit. Um, you know, take uh, this is something I like to do is just kind of take the uh, sliders and move them around, see what looks good, see what doesn't. Uh, I don't like the muted highlights. I think it makes the photo look really dark. I really hate when people do that. <laughs> actually, um, so the highlights. I don't want to be totally blown out. I think if I go a tiny bit up, like there. Looks fine. I think it adds a little bit to the highlights there. It's kind of cool. I usually don't mess with these very much. Uh, RGB. These ones, there's nothing really crazy with the colors I want to change here. Uh, you know, I think the yellow light looks really good. And shadows. Um, one interesting trick you can do with these is like just bring the shadows up and you'll see like a lot of the picture will change just by doing this without even touching the colors at all. And this shadow slider is like totally, totally different than any of these, you know, shadow blacks, dehaze, um, even these like lifting the shadows with these ones. Uh, this shadow slider is just totally different. It adds a totally different feel bringing it up and uh, you can totally mess around with it. It's, it's kind of a cool little, little tool there. I'm not going to mess with it. At this point, though, undo the zero. Shipping is fine. To give a tiny bit of noise reduction. I like looking at the settings I did. So this is at 1.8, 50 millimeter, ISO 100. So there's nothing, there's nothing to uh, smooth out here. So I mean, I could probably just get rid of that. Really, uh, I like the corrections on these. No transform. No. And yet, maybe it's a tiny bit. And then these, this is really like where I kind of add some color, add some punch. Um, I really like, you know, this blue primary slider down here. Bringing up the saturation really gives the color to it. Uh, I don't even, I don't know what it is. This slider down here is just magic. Uh, <laughs> you know, it just adds a lot of stuff to it. I think that's a little overkill. Well, Let's go back. Let's leave it up there. And then we're going to take the red down a little bit because I think her face is a little too orange. Keep the skin kind of similar. It's like maybe there. That looks pretty cool. And then shadows always add an interesting touch to whatever you're doing. So like a lot of people like having these green tones. I personally don't like that. Uh, I don't like going too far purple either. Maybe like a tiny bit, like a plus four like here. Um... Besides that, you know, I think she's a little off center, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to get her eyes focused pretty much in the center. This is about the same distance, uh, somewhere in there. Looks pretty good. And then, I don't know, do we need to do anything really with this? Uh, I kind of want it to be a little more punchy. I don't want the clarity up, I like the clarity down, everything being kind of soft. Let's take the blacks down a little bit. Uh, shadows up, yeah, contrast, eh, maybe up a tiny bit. Yeah, exposure is really, really good, really nailed the, 
the exposure on this. Really nailed the focus on this too. Her eyes are really, yeah. <laughs> you can see every pore in her skin. Yeah, that's why I like to take the clarity down a bit so you can really, it kind of softens people's skin and makes them look really good. Gives a dreamy kind of look to the whole image. Yeah, I mean, it looks so, so soft. When you have clarity negative 32 compared to uh, negative 10, you know, you can see a big difference in those two there. Uh, I'm going to keep it negative 10, maybe bring it a little bit down because I do like how soft and dreamy that is. Um, yeah, I mean, like, this looks pretty fantastic. I, I really like it, actually. Um, I think it's kind of similar to how this one is. This has got a very similar color scheme feel going on to it. I mean, it's clearly negative three, so. Oh, the highlights went way down on this one. Let's see what happens if we bring the highlights down on this. Yeah, it kind of darkens the image a little bit. I'm not sure I like that. It's okay. Bring the exposure up a little bit. Yeah, it's nice and bright. I like it. It looks cool. I do really like adding a uh, radial to these, invert, and this is a burn, so it's darkening, and just kind of, yeah, so darken the sides around her, it just kind of makes her pop a little bit, especially with the light, the light's really bright, you know, you got the hair, it just looks, you know, it's cool, it's just kind of darkening the background a little bit. Um, you could do the same thing if you were to... You create the new mask, select subject. So this is going to select her. I don't want to darken, just regular exposure. So it did a really good job actually of picking out her hair and everything. Sometimes it, it'll miss the hair or miss something, but this was pretty good. Um, so if I were to edit this, I, mean, I think she looks really good. Brightening up a tiny bit, maybe, you know. Um, it's kind of cool. You could actually add some clarity back just a little bit. So it's not like the whole photo. So this stays kind of dreamy. She's a little bit sharper. Um, uh, I'll take it down a little bit. And then if you select subject and invert it back to the background, uh, you can make the background whatever you want. Where's the invert? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to mess with the exposure on the background. I'm just going to take it and lower the texture a little bit. Lower the contrast? No, up the contrast. Nah, let's keep it the same. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's a nice, it's a nice photo. It looks golden. She looks really good. It's nice and bright. In focus. Good shot. Yeah, it's a nice little portrait there. It's very cool. I like it. It probably would be a little bit better if it were like uh, profiled up and down. Um, you know, portrait style, vertical, but, you know, horizontal. It's whatever. So we got this one. I probably like this one a little bit better than that one, actually. That's whatever. Probably going to change that one later, too. Yeah, this one. One of those. They look pretty similar. I'll pick one later. I do like how out of focus, like, you can see how, like, soft and out of focus this is compared to this one. It's a little bit harsher. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. Yeah, it's cool. Anyways, uh, this one's edited. You can see it kind of went over the composition with you guys. I think this looks great. Uh, probably in the, I probably would have moved over a little bit because you can see there's an proportionate amount of sky here compared to here. So these are not like perfectly centered. There's a little bit of space we could get rid of on this side, uh, but we can't bring it down anymore. It'll start to cut this off. So. Looks really cool. I would probably have moved my body over to put her center in between these, made it more even between the frame, you know, little stuff like that. So probably would have done that in the future. But otherwise, you know, still, still a really cool shot. Love how the light like fades on the ground and the lines and stuff. These are really cool. I think we got a little series of, you know, these photos of her in the middle of all these glass. This is shot on the 70 to 200. Um, these are really cool. This was one of my first edits. I think I still like the colors. I think I like... I kind of want a more natural feel, so maybe I want to take this and see what it looks like. 
I'm going to copy the masking. So let's go over to this one. This is unedited. Paste. Let's see if it's a. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. So it's very natural looking. I don't like the. Let's uh, update these two. Which time do we go? We've got a few minutes left. This is probably a good, good place to stop right here. Let's update this one too. Did that select? Why the heck did that select the uh, glass? Oh well. <laughs> That's weird. Um, let's see. So we got this mask here. I don't really like the mask. Let me get rid of that. Um, she looks good. The let's see what the mask says. Show overlay. What is this? Oh, I didn't do the other one yet. No, I did. Because I pasted this. Where's the other one at? How did I end up deleting that? Why does it keep doing that? Is it deleting a mask when I do that? The heck is it doing? Yeah, I don't want that one. I want to keep these ones, though. Why is it... Literally keeps... What the heck? Okay! I'm gonna keep the freaking radial mask if it makes you happy. What the heck? <laughs> Get rid of that. Okay. We got these two. All right. Um, the background, I do want to darken a little bit. Make sure you can really tell that the sun is like popping out on her, but she still looks really well exposed, so that's nice. And then, uh, or you could just really expose the whole photo kind of like that, make it pretty bright, add a little bit more contrast. Uh, highlights are down, that's nice. Uh, I want to make this a little bit warmer. Although not crazy, just a little bit. What was that? Yeah, up at just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, this is not a, this is not a bad edit. Again, I'm gonna go down to like the blue primary color. Kind of add like I like that. Add a little bit of orange, a little bit of teal. Like looks really nice. Make sure it's level. Um, does that look any better? Ah, uh, eh. That looks pretty cool right, as it is. I guess we'll go with that. Um, yeah, so in this kind of photo, you might add like a, uh, you might add a radio filter, make it turn it into like a sun kind of sunspot. Uh, you know, brighten it, turn the yellow up. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Maybe not that much, but um, I got about 30 seconds here. So I hope you guys enjoyed some of the editing. Um, this is kind of a cool shoot to do just for fun. You know, her and I just collaborated, no pay or anything, just kind of a creative creative shoot we got together to do. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> these shots. They're pretty fun, they're pretty interesting. Um, tried to have some good composition with these. And um, yeah, go check out 14 Peaks. Um, live a good life. You know, hope you guys learned something from this video and I'll see you soon for a reveal of what I bought in the future.